Hi, Juan. Hi. It's so nice to meet you. I'm Bryce. Hey, Bryce. How you doing? I'm so good. Thank you so much for having me on today. It's truly a pleasure to be able to kind of see you and <laughs> talk to you. <laughs> well, as soon as I get my uh, camera sorted out here, I'll have it sorted out. Hold on a second there. We'll see there the we boots. Go. There you go. <laughs> All right. There, there you are. are. Wow. So I, I love those boots. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, and you know, these are my, uh, uh, I cut a part of the insole on my uh, boots that I wear most of the time. And so I had to grab a uh, backup pair and uh, my other ones are in having a repair done. I really like them. And uh, so these ones here are ostrich and I don't, I don't really like the snake or the crocodile and all that. So uh, the ostrich is nice because it stretches nicely. And so I'm just breaking these in. You're the first show where I've used any boots other than my other boots ever in the whole entire world in an interview. <laughs> That is awesome. So awesome. This is an international party. first. There you go. <laughs> That's you go. awesome. Well, should we get? We should we jump straight in, straight into it? So, um, yeah, I already hit record, so I can edit out like the cool. first part. You can go ahead. And That's all. Oh, well, the, boot, the boots are good. Keep the boots in. That's okay. fine. Sorry. <laughs> I will. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna get my get me a little water to keep my voice from uh, uh, going there. So, yeah. There you go. Well, welcome everyone. So this is Tom Sydney Bushnell aka numbers from site club and we've got a wonderful episode today um in conjunction with uh, bryce watson from esoteric atlanta and we've got mr 107 in the house with us with uh, these newly broken in boots so uh <laughs> one it's a pleasure to have you buddy and bryce it's a pleasure to have you yeah absolutely it's a joy to be here well and i, so, I would say that the boots aren't quite broken in yet you're the first show in the world where I've ever worn anything other than my other uh, boots. And I had cut just a small place in the insole. Um, I was out uh, uh, doing something over at one of the uh, racing tracks and I caught it on a piece of metal or something. So I got uh, these uh, temporarily while my other ones are being sent out to have a repair or something done. And so you're the first people in the world to ever see me in a different <laughs> set of boots. It's almost like getting a fresh haircut. I feel, you know, all you new go. and fresh here. <laughs> <laughs> we've just come out of lockdown here in the uk you get haircuts and now we've got the fresh boots one i wanted to jump in in terms of the numbers so um the gematria that we'll be doing mainly will be simple gematria uh which is a equals one b equals two c equals three d equals four etc the, the order of the the letter and the number come in the alphabet so just just for those viewers that are new to this um but i wanted to jump in and ask you what uh is the meaning in terms of the numbers and maybe other meanings between behind 107 because i've got some numbers on the simple gematria i want to share with you after but i wanted to hear it straight from the cowboy's mouth um <laughs> and uh, and get your take on on your your well-known name so well of course uh in uh, uh most forms of gematria uh the zero has no value it has no okay. meaning so you drop the zero and uh <clears throat> then beyond that, there's some private meetings. I haven't really gone into in a public forum um, okay. and how those uh, came to be. But, you know, what's, it's, what's interesting, let me just say this. Yeah. Uh, there's two directions you can look at all the numbers before we ever get started into this. Uh, and that is there's a matrix of numbers that appears to be natural. And uh, for all the world... Uh, these things, it's amazing how numbers that are not uh, manipulated uh, will later come to be seen as having almost some kind of, uh, there's an esoteric, there's a uh, hidden, but uh, somehow in the fabric of the universe, perfectly um, patterned matrix where the numbers um, uh it's like it was meant to be the other side of the coin is we have um a certain amount of wizardry and magicianship where uh the numbers are imprinted and branded into things with the intent that by artificially manipulating the numerology the numerics uh in events in names in dates uh, yeah. that there is a branding that is uh, attempted to be done. It's almost like there's a divine side 
that is outside the reach of man merely or any entity but God himself. And then there is a uh, attempt to manipulate the fabric of life and time to uh, put an imprint that has certain branding and meaning. And these are the artificial constructs uh, where dates and times are picked, planned, uh, correlated, uh, for example, to celestial events, uh, the timing uh, out through the cosmos of uh, planetary uh, crossings, intercepts, and that also have real physical physics behind them um, that affect emotions, uh, energy, etc., in very real, scientifically provable ways. This isn't just um, <clears throat> totally, you know, we want the alignments to occur because, you know, the gods will be pleased. There is actual, real, trackable energy. Uh, that relates to the other physics that isn't taught in the listed classes in universities, um, but is the other physics uh, beyond the quantum and all that stuff. Um, and so these real trackable energies are crucial to these uh, societies because they understand the physics, the underlying physics um, that uh, have to do with uh, energy and manipulation of uh, social uh, uh, you know, interactions, constructs, etc. So is that, that uh, a good starting that point? Is, yeah, that's a real good Fantastic. starting point. Thank you. Um, the numbers I've done on the simple gematria, so like I said, A is the first letter, B is the second letter, C is the third, D is the fourth, etc. So one, J-U-A-N, comes to 46, which comes to dove. You think of the sign of the dove in terms of Christianity. Um, President Trump is born in 1946. He's born... Um, fourteen six, so fourteen June. So if you if you do one times forty six, it's forty six. Uh, oh, I hear what you say about you know you drop the zeros and some of the methods. So in the simple gematria, I always include the the O's because O is fifteen. You've got zero, which is sixty four, but O is fifteen, which takes you. And you said about magic, so I thought that was that was on point because sixty one takes you to miracle. So forty six one O takes you to Miracle 61, 46 plus 15, also takes you to Casino, also takes you to Don Jr. And Savin, S-A-V-I-N, comes to 65, which comes to the number 7, comes to the number 15, um, comes to Kansas, uh, comes to the word stay. I always talk about Christopher Nolan. I'm a big film buff, and he's a, a white hat director uh, working closely with President Trump and, and Q, in my estimation and understanding of his work and the numbers. Um, but if you add all those together, it comes to 126. 126 is a very significant one because uh, atomic silver is 47, which is John as well. Atomic gold is atomic number 79. 79 comes to super, comes to wonder, comes to mother. Add those together, it takes you to 126. So atomic silver and atomic gold is 126, which is 107. Also, that comes to the, the phrase uh, Chinese elders. Uh, it also comes to the number. If you spell the number 45, you think 45th president, you think the, the, the suit of um, spades in the deck of cards is 45 as well, spades, singular. Um, also effect, you know, like the domino effect and positive effect on things. But... Um, 45, so 40 is 84, and 5 is 42. Add those together, you come to uh, 126. So you've got 45th president, you've got the spade, which is the most powerful, um, most spiritual uh, suit in the, in the deck of cards. And you mentioned as well, you said quantum, the word quantum. So you've probably heard this before, one, but your name, when you say it 107, people quite often hear 107, like 107. And you must have heard that hundreds of times. But 107, the number 107, comes to the plural version of Trump. So Trump is 88, add an S, which is the number 19, takes you to 107, which comes to quantum, comes to currency, it comes to military, it comes to Aquarius, it comes to the number 20, comes to Superman as well. So uh, there's quite a lot in there, buddy, I thought you'd enjoy. 
Um, well, and let me just point. add one thing. <clears throat> yeah. Um, you have uh, parallel things that uh, people have to remember. Uh, 107 is not the same as Juan O. Savin. And no. so uh, no. O is not a, a number in that particular uh, application. So uh, you are correct on that. And uh, uh, I will add also that uh, silver and gold in the monetary system uh, one interesting aspect of that that most people aren't aware of, uh, uh, at the beginning, uh, in the early Olympics, uh, gold was not first place. Silver was first place, and gold oh. was second place, and uh, that was later changed. And um, the issue with gold is um, uh, divisibility and um, uh, the ability to... Uh, have enough quantity in order to be able to service transactions in large numbers. And so silver is much more available and uh, easier to mint and uh, uh, move. It is heavier by volume uh, for, for value, but it's, it's, a, it's a much more easy, easily uh, um, minted and uh, uh, easier to spread out in values that... Uh, you can do transactions. And so that's why uh, uh, silver is actually the most suppressed and um, uh, uh, important of the metals for what's going to happen out into the future in the monetary uh, applications. <laughs> I, I could talk more on it, but I'm just, I'm just, uh, you mentioned that. That's, I thought I'd yeah, raise that cool. for the benefit of yeah. your uh, uh, listeners. That's cool. Super interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. When, when did they change it in the Olympics? When did they switch it? Uh, it was done uh, ancient times. Uh, oh, okay. And it had to do, you know, the the bankers that uh, really started this uh, trading. You know, you'd get robbed if you had gold and silver, so you'd do deals uh, and you know use the Templars and like that to do these transactions. There was groups before that, um, but you know when you think of goods being shipped across the world in that uh, really ancient time, uh, back to say the Babylonian time, even to the Sumerian times, um, they would do a little change up. And for a, a particular number of years, gold would be the preferred metal that people bringing merchandise to trade and uh, get, uh, you know, metals, they prefer gold. Then the, um, uh, people, the banking people, if you will, in the background, they would say, no, 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 we don't need so much gold. We got plenty of gold. We need more silver. And so all of a sudden, everybody that would be bringing goods would demand payment in silver. And so this change up back and forth meant that the bankers were making uh, an advantage, not just on the goods that were traded, but by this uh, switch over back and forth, silver and gold, silver and gold. And when they would change it up, they would get some piece of the action for um, conversion uh, to the other preferred uh, uh, metal. And uh, it was just kind of a game that they played in the background. These families have been at this for uh, eons and uh, the, back to the beginnings of society. And they know how to, uh, you know, make hay. Uh, the cats, they can skin a cat more than one way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's been a, one of the one of the things that I, I love to do is research and I love history. And I've been going through a lot of the uh, missing books of the Bible and realizing how everything that's going on right now is actually in the Bible. And this is literally is a, seems to be a fight between the Canaanites and the Israelites since the very beginning of time. And it's all well, let me let me just dive in one. One thing you, you said something very important. I think it's very critical for your listeners to consider this. It's not just the biblical works. While we have been trained <clears throat> to accept that only the approved uh, writings uh, in the 66 books of the Bible, or if you're Catholic, uh, the, including the Apocrypha, are the accepted uh, um, writings in the Bible, Christ himself quoted from Enoch, uh, Book of Enoch. Um, uh, Christ was raised in Egypt. 
and the library in Alexandria uh, was there and had all of these important uh, ancient writings. Um, the book that I quote from quite frequently, um, The Lost Books of Eden, uh, the history there is that when uh, the descendants of Abraham, who is the father of the faithful in the uh, Christian Jewish religions, Abraham went out and sojourned, called by God to go through this area that God was going to give him that we now call the Holy Lands. And, uh, you know, uh, this area with Israel and the Palestinians and all these areas, that's where Abraham went and camped, sojourned, traveled in this ancient time. And, and God told Abraham that he would give everywhere he placed the sole of his foot for an inheritance. So he had to travel this land, you know, walk that land, and then God was going to give it to him. And he said he would give it to his descendants who would number as the sand of the seashore mm -hmm. and the stars in the heaven for number if you could count them. So this vast and unimaginable number. And so... Uh, but Abraham didn't have any kids. By faith, he trusted God. Eventually, he had uh, his child when he was an old man via Sarah that was an old lady. And uh, that uh, became the tribes. Um, Abraham's descendants through Isaac and then Jacob uh, came to find themselves living in Egypt during a famine. And their older, the younger brother, Joseph, uh, through so this biblical story uh, where he was sold into slavery by his own brothers, uh, he ends up becoming Pharaoh's right-hand man, having interpreted a dream. And he becomes the most powerful man in Egypt under the authority of, of Pharaoh of Egypt. And when his family is there, Joseph has the family lore, the passed down verbal history of the family from Adam when Adam and Eve le left the garden that was passed down through all the generations all the way down to Abraham, Isaac, and then Jacob and his children. When they find themselves in Egypt, Egypt is this um, treasury of books and knowledge ancient history from the world as much as they could gather in. They were the library. And so Joseph had that verbal history recorded in Egypt. And uh, that's part of that library. And it's the story from Adam and Eve when they left the garden and those first 50 days and then the generations afterwards. So that's not included in the biblical narrative. Yet, um, my personal interpretation, you could say, well, somebody changed something, it's been, um, you know, changed in some subtle way, it doesn't match the numerological uh, perfection that we do find in the books of the Bible have been passed down, you know, in our generation, like Genesis, there's a, a numerical precision in every single letter, every period, every exclamation point or, or accent mark in that original uh, uh, writing in the original uh, Hebrew that is so perfect that it's just incomprehensible as you look at this matrix of the numbers, the letters which have a numerical value in the uh, books of the Bible. So you might say that the lost books of Eden don't have that <clears throat> But they were recorded in a different language, in a different way than the books of Moses. That doesn't change, though, that from my perception, the incredible beauty, the um, uh, important minutia of detail of uh, what it was like for Adam and Eve coming out of the garden, or the story of Enoch having been caught up into heaven and his observations aren't absolutely critical. And uh, if you go to the recorded portions of the Bible um, from the things that Christ uh, was reported to have said by the apostles, then um, uh, that uh, validates the value of these books for those who are of, you know, some faith. Does that click for you? Yeah, no, I've, mm. I've been reading all, like, uh, I've, we're, I'm doing the book of Jubilee right mm. now, which is very much, we're now in, um, into um, uh, 
I, I Jacob and Esau and, and the Edomites and then Jacob going off and having his wives and the 12 tribes of, of Israel. So, and uh, we've done a lot of the new Testament stuff as well. Like the gospel of the Holy 12 was one of my, I cried my way through that book that was missing from the Bible. Um, and I do try to, tell people, you know, there's a lot that's 2000 years ago, there's a lot that is out there that is just as valid that we didn't get in at vacation Bible school, you know, so, <laughs> you know, I, well, I'm, it, I'm let me it. just add this, let me interject one thing, you know, um, <clears throat> King James, King James Bible, mm -hmm. uh, King James was not a believer, he was a uh, Masonic, he mm -hmm. had uh, certain other beliefs, but there had to be some unity within the kingdom. And of course, the Protestant version of the Bible, Anglican version of the Bible, has 66 books. They wanted only a precise number that fit their numerology again. And so, uh, uh, was that all the books that may have actually uh, fit some divine pattern that should be considered in the canon of scriptures that we review? Uh, and, and while I understand cutting off the scriptures um, related to direct uh, people that had contact with Christ, the early recorders of, of those writings, uh, there's some early church fathers that uh, they're writing uh, Tertullian uh, uh, and others like him have incredible observations that I, there's things that I might not agree with them on, on the, um, their direct beliefs or understanding of things, um, but yet the value of their observations, even the mental gymnastics that they go through to arrive at certain conclusions, um, for somebody that's trying to dig deeper and to find the real meat, you know, there's, there's some bones in there that, uh, you know, somebody you else might be able to chew them down, but I'm <laughs> Yeah, no, for sure. I, I absolutely, and I know that, um, especially the early church fathers, I been, you know, my studies with all the old, uh, all the missing gospels, um, mm -hmm. I know a lot of the early church fathers as well were, were battling persecution, you know, you look at what happened to Polycarp and his students and the even the apostles themselves were pretty much fugitive yes. after um, Jesus was executed, basically. Um, yes. So and so there's a lot of uh, human, I think, because we're so far removed from that time. A lot of people probably don't recognize or don't take the time to recognize that there's trauma there and there's stress. There's unbelievable stress in, in these people's lives. And so I totally value that. And I've, I've really enjoyed I grew up Presbyterian and your grandfathered into things. And so you kind of ignore some stories, but just in this, just in this past year, just going through all of these different books and, and having discussions about them um, have really helped me as well. My, my faith has gotten stronger um, mm -hmm. going through them. So, um, and um, you know, I'll be, and, and this great awakening too. I think many people in this great awakening have had a renewed sense of faith in, in God and faith in the divine. And faith in the numbers, that's because yeah, you know, this is numbers, and it's like wow, you can't even make this up. Like this is so unbelievable and special. <laughs> Some numbers have come up actually in the last five minutes or so. So, Juan, you said um, you talked about Olympic. Um, that comes to ninety three in simple gematria, which comes mm -hmm. to Flotus, It comes to kingship. It comes to Nazareth. It comes to my last name Bushnell. So I always notice that. Then you mentioned Enoch. And Enoch comes to 45, and right at the beginning, I was saying how, if you include the O, 107 comes to the spelling of the word uh, 45. Um, and then you spoke about Abraham, and Bryce has touched on it as well. So you said Abraham, and you said Abraham in regards to those that, I think you said father of the faithful. But the word yes. faith comes to 44. <laughs> Hope, interestingly enough, comes to 44. But Abraham comes to 44 as well. And the word chess you know, the great five-dimensional chess game that President Trump and the alliance are playing comes to 44. And you also mentioned um, uh, Sarah, the wife of Abraham. And Sarah comes to 47, which is atomic silver, and we spoke about that right at the beginning, and you talked about how the value of silver is greatly suppressed. So there's some nice parallels there. And then you mentioned uh, Joseph and Egypt, and you said about number the power of numbers, but number, singular. So Egypt comes to 73. Joseph comes to 73. So think on that, you know, Joseph in Egypt. And the word number 
comes to 73 as well. And um, you mentioned as well about the matrix. And if you spell the word matrix in simple gematria, it comes to 85, which also comes to the spelling of the word silver, S-I-L-V-E-R, comes to 85, and uh, storm. So, you know, the storm is coming, and the storm is 85 <laughs> as well. Well, and I might, word, might mention... Uh, yeah, second edition of uh, my book, uh, "Kid by the Side of the Road," um, <clears throat> uh, just came out in the last few days, and uh, they're just shipping it. I think uh, yesterday was the first day they started shipping, and um, the third edition is in the works right now, and it'll be out sometime later in the summer, and uh, with all new text in it, and that is called the storm. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> is that a clue as to when we're going to experience the storm of yeah. God's for real? <laughs> yeah. And by the way, well, let me just let me just add this. Um, it's important to remember that both sides are fighting to own the numbers in the most generic sense: uh, good and evil, uh, Father God in heaven, and uh, Satan, Lucifer, the devil, are both trying to own the numbers. And so you can hear a number and say, well, that's a good number. Uh, oh no, that's a bad number. Um, both sides are, are uh, playing uh, in this casino royale for planet earth to yeah. own these specific numbers. So you can have a good application and an evil application of any of these numbers. And, and so just don't assume because you've seen a number, Oh, it's good. And, and it's something that's uh you know, God's behind or something. There's a certain momentum both ways to uh, to own some of these. You know, and, and the that. thing that I was thinking of specific, you know, four is the number of foundation. And so uh, when you see a 44, um, this is uh, an attempt uh, most of the time to institute a foundational thing. So, for example, faith is the foundation on which all of our um spiritual life is based on there's a faith aspect to that that's the foundation of everything that that we're trying to do within our faith and that's why abraham is called the father of the faithful and this uh four four um <clears throat> so you'll see that repeatedly with numbers just like uh, 17 both sides are trying to own it uh, 17 is the death and resurrection date of osiris uh mm -hmm. 17 in the bible as uh, osiris this occult group that's really uh, uh, all of this uh, with religion in the Western uh, world, uh, Washington, D.C., etc., uh, is built around the 17. So, for example, the Washington Monument is this monument in stone to Osiris' penis, and uh, it's also uh, uh, Osiris' number is 17. Uh, conversely, the 17th book of the Bible is the book of Esther, and that's the number of victory and reversals. And so there's a fight for the ownership of 17. So just, just little teeny things that people might find interesting there. Yeah, definitely. And even in your name, so you, you said about the, so phonetically, if you say 107, it's not the same as 107. We know that, but just yes. hearing it, if you drop the O from 107, you drop the, the zero, you've got 17. Mm -hmm. Um so that's interesting. Um, and you mentioned as well about... Uh, yeah, there's some matrix hand. things there uh, naturally that uh, someday we'll, we'll talk about, but there are yeah. uh, amazing things there that are, are a lot of fun. So there's a natural and a ma manufactured. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you talked as well about Abraham and, and having offspring, you know, as, as this, you know, the sands of the seashore. So sand, S-A-N-D, comes to 38, which if you spell the word gold, comes to 38 as well. So we've had quite a bit on gold and silver already. You know, we started off with it and we've had it, you know, talking in reference to this thing with, with Abraham and the Matrix, etc. cetera. Um, something else as well, you said father. So father comes to 58, which comes to also comes to Nessara, which is quite on point. Um, it also comes to... Uh, the word star comes to uh, Ivanka. Uh, it depends if people are into cryptos or not. The XRP, that coin comes to 58. Um, but one of the things I wanted to, to bring you back to, one was um, I mentioned Christopher Nolan, the, the, the great film director. And I don't know if you've had a chance to see this, but last summer his film Tenet 
came out. And those that are regular viewers on my channel will know that I talk about this movie a lot because I, I see that it's a playbook for where we're at right now. And one of the key themes, well, the word tenet in terms of belief, you know, what do you believe? But the word tenet, when you spell it out in simple gematria, comes to 64, which comes to Israel. But it also comes to the word American. And it also comes to the word jubilee. So I like the, the numbers and the symbolism of that. But one of the key things in that film is they talk about, there's a lot of, there's a big reference to gold. Um, there's also a reference to time travel and reversing things, the reversal of things, to, you know, restoring things. And they physically show that in terms of a device that they call a turnstile. And um, they make reference to it being, a, they call it a pentagon. So it's a pentagon shape, but it's very subtle, the reference to pentagon. The word pentagon comes to 92, which comes to my nickname numbers. It comes to Watson, which is Bryce's last name. It also comes to Manhattan, but it comes to the word pentagon 92, which also comes to the word reverse. So if you reverse something, it's actually a simple gematria is 92. But the word turnstile comes to 138, which comes to Donald Trump, comes to Salt Lake City, comes to the pyramids. It comes to... Um, Dome of the Rock, we've seen some things there recently in Israel. It comes to uh, Cyberstorm. It comes to uh, River Thames as well. But if you add 138 plus 92, that takes you to 230. And interestingly enough, the film Tenet actually lasts for two hours, 30 minutes. So that's one way to show that. Or you could say two hours, 30 minutes also equals 150 minutes. And 150 comes to the phrase, pull the plug which is um, in the film Terminator, but, you know, draining the swamp, pulling the plug, et cetera. But I wanted to ask a specific well, question. Let, let, me, let me just mention glass. this also. Yeah. Uh, before you do that, <clears throat> 23, any, anything that's branded um, with the number 23, events that are constructed to uh, have 23 in them, 23, yeah. anything that has 23 in it is intended to affect the whole world. And remember, 23 uh, chromosomes from each parent. Um, yes. uh, also, by the way, 29, when you see 29, uh, yes. that's any date, every date that has 29 in it is a chaos date. Um, and there's uh, mythology related to this goddess that causes chaos on the 29th. But also, 29 is code for 9-11. Huh. Nine plus two, nine, nine, and then you add the two, 11. And so yeah. you see that very frequently in these, uh, um, uh, it's, it's a number that's used for communications. Remember, the language of the cabals that we're dealing with, these hidden societies, mm. these secret societies, uh, the language that they use is numbers. And so they communicate with each other with these numbers right in plain sight, and only the initiated understand what they mean. And then the numbers have different language divisions within them. So a Masonic cabal might not uh, communicate using uh, the numbers with the same meaning as a uh, certain of the satanic or witches cabals wizardry. Etc. Mm -hmm. They may have little internal meaning. So, for example, when we say 93, Aleister Crowley said that the most um, holy number was 93. They're into reversals. The 93 is a, another way of saying 39. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> the most powerful spells are spells that you magnify three times. That's the maximum amount that you can magnify a spell. So, you take 39, you say, well, what if it's part of a spell, what would be the core base number? It'd be 13. There's 13 bloodline families. So three times 13 is 39. That's why you have launch pad 39A and 39B in this uh, myth of going to the moon. Well, uh, why couldn't it have been 39 and 40? Because the magic, the numerology, it had to be branded with 39. So launch pad 39A and 39B for this um, uh, global um, uh, branding of an idea, a mythos um, in this, you know, uh, uh, NASA is the most um, occult religious organization on, uh, in the whole U.S. system. 
uh, as a government entity. So anyway, just that little diversion, but I, I, I it's helpful for people maybe to kind of give them these little tidbits yeah. as we go. So sorry, for, sorry for interrupting your flow though. Oh, that's cool. That's it's very enlightening. So number 23 as well, it equals I am. So you've got the whole thing of the great I am. And, um, 29 comes to Diana, comes to August, AUG, just the abbreviation. And interesting enough, the power number that they make, make reference to in the Terminator film, which has just been re-released again, Terminator 2, August 29. And August 29 is day 241 of the year. And 241 is the is the um, uh, the algorithm that they're searching for in the Tenet film, which is interesting as well. So it all ties those things in. Um, but I wanted to ask about, and also 90, you said 93, the flip of it, 39. 39 is, is the month of May. May, on your simple gematria, equals 39, equals the number 10, and even Big Ben as well, which is in, in London. But um, I wanted to ask you specifically about any knowledge that you can share in terms of white hat, uh, looking glass technology in terms of us. So the turnstile 138, Donald Trump plus Pentagon 92 takes to 230, which is the number of minutes in the film. You said about 23. So I'm wondering if, if you're able to share any knowledge about time reversal and how Junior and others have been using that to get us to this point in the chessboard where we're at. I'd love to to pick your brain on that. Well, the, the first thing, let me just say this. Uh, for mm. anybody that questions whether or not time travel is possible, the Bible talks about time travel very clearly. Go to the book of Daniel. I spoke about it in a, in a presentation I did over at Jennifer Mack's channel and another one at Space Shot 76 um, about Esther <clears throat> and the book of Esther. Mm -hmm. This moment in time we're in is about uh, this reversal. In that uh, book of Daniel, um, uh, Daniel was praying about what would be the fate of the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the uh, nation uh, of the Jews, and what would be their fate out into the future, because they were in slavery at the time. Daniel himself being a slave and also being uh, uh, castrated uh, would never have children of his own. So what would happen to these children in slavery? And in this prayer and fasting period, uh, God sent an angel, and that angel uh, is said, uh, the angel told Daniel directly that he had come from this future event uh, across time, walking across time like we walk across the street. And the angel said, I just came from these future events back through time to you to tell you what is going to happen uh, in your future and in the future of your nation, your, your people, your family. And so uh, here the Bible is clearly talking about time travel, not just an understanding of what time would be in the future, like a, uh, a prophecy or something. The angel said he came from that time back to Daniel. So, Within some spiritual sense, we can uh, say that, you know, from a, even a God perspective, it was not done in a predictive sense. It was a done deal. As that angel came back across time to talk with Daniel and give him that information, he was walking across time as a physical construct, every bit as much as Daniel was living in the time and space that he was in. The angel had come from a physical reality in the future to tell him about this, not a predicted, vaporous uh, thing. You, you get what I, the intricacy of what I'm saying, the difference between those, those terms? Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. So now if we have that as a premise, um, <clears throat> is time travel possible? Clearly it is. Is it something that we have the technology to do ourselves apart from some divine or angelic aspect and uh the, you really get into the weeds on this um <clears throat> if you know and of course a lot of the sci-fi stuff goes into uh, some of the intricacies of it and uh, it was one of isaac asimov sir, sir isaac asimov's favorite uh areas to research of course and, and a lot of people don't realize here is this unbelievable science fiction writer i think the greatest of all time 
He was also one of the greatest biblical scholars ever. And he wrote extensively uh, from a biblical perspective, uh, uh, walked all the holy lands, read all of the books, researched everything. He's probably the most uh, deeply read biblical scholar, uh, perhaps in history. And uh, um, with the only other one in my uh, opinion being in the same zone is uh, Alfred Eidersheim, a German, uh, who wrote uh, Life and Times of Jesus Christ the Messiah, one of the great, great works ever. And uh, um, But both of these men actually tell you indirectly that they believed that uh, time travel, in a sense, was absolutely uh, possible, but also reserved somehow to these um to the divine entity uh this god side and god's angels that satan and his angels did not have that same capability that they were not able to walk across time like god's angels did so the angel at persia that the uh, angel michael encountered in coming to daniel the angel at persia uh was a, an angel, a dark angel, locked in time. And so he was there guarding and holding um, his position over Persia, which didn't exist in Daniel's time at the time the angel came to him. That was a future kingdom. Um, and so uh, uh, those angels don't appear to be able to walk across time in the same way. And in and, and my uh, to take that then to the present day, the present technology, this moment, there does appear, and there's a number of people that talk about it, and, and their work is pretty good, <clears throat> that talk about being able to uh, uh, slow time down or the passage of time down uh, inside of certain um, mechanical uh, matrixes uh, uh, by mechanical devices. Um, and so outside the bubble, time would pass at a certain rate. And inside that bubble, it would pass at a different rate. And the reason this is important, let's say you're a leader in some country like here in the United States, and a crisis is erupting. There's a certain amount of time that you use just traveling from point to point, acquiring information, digesting it, and then coming up with uh, responses to things. And so the contention has been by uh, actually a fairly large number that we have the ability to create um, these locations where we have a bubble and we can um, operate not slower, but technically faster inside that bubble in the same space of time that would be an hour for you mm. we can physically operate think function several times faster than that and uh get a day's work done in what to you appears to be an hour um <clears throat> my uh, uh response to all of that for all of those people that want to have that conversation is this we have a long history of messing with our enemies and opponents. And uh, there's lots of things that are said in order to cause our enemies and opponents to waste time and money and resources trying to figure out how we've done stuff uh, so that they can do it. Because if they believe it's possible, because they've got intel that it's possible, then they would, uh, you know, go try to duplicate. And they go down the wrong uh, trail, wasting time and resources on something that's not factual. The converse of that is this. Let me just tell you a little story. Uh, there's a great uh, sci-fi angle where... Uh, the professors, the scientists, are gathered into a room in, in an area that uses a number for a name. And they're shown a film. And this film depicts uh, that, uh, you know, let's just, we're just talking theory here, but I'm trying to get something through to your listeners. In this uh, thing, they show these scientists that uh, 
for want of a better term, just because your listeners don't understand, it's not accurate, but uh, uh, the term that people recognize that anti-gravity um, travel is possible and that uh, you can make a device that makes gravity null and void and you can float and fly and everything else uh, due to anti-gravity. And so the scientists see this captured film from the enemy and the enemy is testing this device and it works really good. And you see the guy zoom up in the air and he's floating around and he's rocketing up and down and everything else and comes back down. And the scientists all look at it and they go, oh, that's not possible. They can't possibly, the physics, it's not possible. You know, it's like in the old days, they said that, uh, you know, people, one of the scientists claimed famously that uh, a man couldn't travel faster than 60 miles an hour, theoretically, because if he did, his heart would stop beating and he'd die because the speed of a horse is only, you know, 30 and a Jaguar could go 60 and then and nothing could go faster than that. Other they, otherwise, they'd have a heart attack and die. Well, that obviously wasn't true. So these scientists are in the room. They see this magical event and then they have to go, well, but the, the spies and the film we saw show that it is true. So it must be possible. Well, if it is possible, how would they have done it? So they start crunching the numbers and they start looking and all of a sudden somebody gets a bright idea. Well, it could be that if you did this electrically, if you did that electrically, if you change this field effect, et cetera, maybe you could do something. And so a period of time goes by and all of a sudden they come back and they can't do everything that the, the bad guys did, but they can lift something off in a few ounces and they can float it around and come back down. Oh, well, now it's not that it's not possible. It's just the scale our enemies that are doing it is so much bigger than we can, but we've proven we can do it. Now we've got to figure out how to do it better. And they keep working at it. And after a period of time, all of a sudden, they've perfected this ability to do anti-gravity. And they're all excited. And they show the bosses and everything else. And then uh, now they've got anti-gravity. They can fly around like the enemy does. They we're okay. We've got it. And then somebody tells them, well, actually... Uh, we made that up. It was just a green screen. It's all pretend, but you did it. They were fooled into believing their enemy could do something a certain way. So then they lost that mental stop that said it can't be done. Right. Yeah. And then they went and did it. And let me yeah. add this from a biblical perspective. At the Tower of Babel, all of the people came together. They spoke one language and God looked down on them and saw that they were building this tower to the heavens, which is another name for a space program. And <laughs> God himself said that nothing which they imagined would be impossible to them. And so he confused the languages so that they couldn't communicate one with another. And then they had to disperse and they abandoned their project. Now, all of that to say this, coming back to the numbers. In our time, the very thing that God did to confound and confuse those people from that era from moving forward with their space program to leave planet Earth, to leave the prison planet and get back to wherever they thought they wanted to get to, uh, was to confuse their languages. In our era, we have defeated this move or act of God to confound our ability to communicate one with another across all the peoples of the Earth. And what is the now common language between all of us across the planet. It's not computers, if you will, it's numbers, yeah, numbers ones yeah. and zeros. And so we have converted our language into a computer code where we put it in, we uh, put it in certain terms, and then we can bring it back out. And I can talk to you, you can talk to me through the computer. We put our languages in completely separate and we can communicate back and forth. We have defeated the confusion of the languages back at Babel. So then I go to one step further. God himself said that nothing 
which they imagined impossible would be impossible to them. So do you say that time travel is possible? Huh? Yeah. I think uh, it's possible, but um, my contention would be we're not quite there. We're at the edge of many of these things. There may be some ability to manipulate the rate of time for us. It's not quite the same as the uh, situation with uh, Michael walking across time. Um, and I think that that still is reserved away from us. There may be some toying with everybody to get them off on, you know, certain things. Uh, we are being trolled. All sides are being trolled and taken off point. Um, both the good guys and the bad guys. And it's just part of this broad strategy in this fight we're in right now. So I, I hope that's not too all over the place for people, but just give you some. That's great. That's about. great. Awesome. Totally you awesome. said about the, the time bubble. Was there a name for that when they were trying to describe that time bubble? Because I, I did the numbers on that one and time is 47, which is John. Uh, bubble, interestingly enough, is 44, which is Abraham, which is faith. And you add those together, comes to 91, which comes to POTUS comes to liberty, uh, comes to the father, and it also comes to space force. And uh, you're talking about, you know, building a, you know, a tower. Well, and let me just add this. Or, or with the space, space program, you know, so. Let me just add this with the space mm. force. Um, nothing in the term space force that says outer space. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What space are we talking about controlling? Yeah. Yeah. Inner space. <laughs> and, and space is 44 as well. It's Abraham. Yes. It's, uh, it's bubble. It's anti. Um, yeah, very good point. Yeah. Anti-gravity as well is. Um, uh, well, let me just add this. You know, uh, Satan, uh, uh, the devil, he's called the. Um, uh, Prince of the power of the air. And there is a restriction mm -hmm. down to the edge of the air or where the air can go um, related to uh, that force and power. And so uh, when you can go beyond the air, you have a, a different realm of power. And uh, now you're out into the uh, realm of the watchers, etc. So there's, there's quite a few things in there that are really, we'd lose too many of, of the listeners, but that are certainly a very fun conversation that can be had, and maybe out in the future we'll have it. Yeah, for sure. I'd love that. So you're talking about, you, in terms of, are you talking kind of beyond the firmament then, or, you know? That's what I was thinking. The firmament is mentioned so many times in the Bible. Is that is that what you're saying, that we're in a firmament, we're in like a bubble ourselves in this planet? Um, yeah, um, it's, it's not... Uh, let me just say this. I'll have all the flat earthers going crazy right now. Uh, <laughs> and let me just tell you that, that uh, the whole flat earth thing was, uh, that was funded. In fact, uh, one of the uh, uh, disciples of Crowley is um, Michael Aquino, uh, this uh, person in the U.S. Army who has a very dark history. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, he himself has acknowledged that he received a tremendous amount of money uh, for funding to promote the uh, uh, idea of the flat earth um, as a, uh, uh, it was part of a tracking operation to map uh, suggestibility and um, uh, the ability to maneuver or manipulate people in the internet to uh, convey and pass on certain ideas and to find who those um, uh, uh, choke points were for information that then pass it on, these nodes, these people, uh, uh, influencers. And so <clears throat> this whole flat earth thing, for all the people get all excited and they think they've learned something, was part of a information tracking operation uh, that was funded by DARPA. Uh, out into the uh, uh, internet community. And so um, how much did it have to do with any reality? Bullshit. Okay. On the physics, on the real stuff, there's all sorts of fun, interesting stuff there. But the reality is, uh, you know, if you want to get right down to it, uh, go back to Enoch 
and Enoch, uh, his travel up from the earth and out into uh, the solar system and beyond. Uh, it's amazing. The Book of Enoch, which is an ancient writing, um, shows the revolutions, the rotations, um, uh, all of the physics at the minutia sub subatomic level, the atomic level, um, and out through the uh, uh, celestial solar system and, and, and galactic, it's rotation, rotation, rotation. And uh, that goes to the other physics also, uh, is all based on um, these, uh, this rotation and this, uh, uh, the interlocking um, uh, influence effects, field effects of these bodies at the subatomic level uh, all the way through galactic level. Uh, you know, the, the, it's the same principle all the way through. Uh, I prefer the term torsion. There's uh, a hundred different terms depending on how you're doing it and who's trying to own it. But it's the same, you know, a rose by another name. It's still a rose. Okay. You can call it whatever name you want, whatever language you want. It's still a rose. Okay. The other physics it has a very specific set of principles, ways that it works. Different scientists have mapped different aspects of it. It's like reaching into the box and you say the elephant is long and slinky. Well, you got his tail. You say it's like a tree trunk. Well, you got his foot. You know, uh, it's very floppy. Well, you got his ear. Um, it's the same elephant. You're just looking at it from different uh, locations. Uh, the other physics, the sub subatomic physics, the dark matter, um, uh, some people want to call it zero point. Some people uh, use other terms. I prefer, as I said, uh, torsion, um, but it's this uh, other physics that's the basis for the other energy systems. And if you want to go into time travel, is the core to why it works the way it does. Um, and as you uh, tra traverse, it's not that things are bigger in this other realm, it's infinitely smaller. And as you traverse that Planck length limitation, and uh, get to the sub subatomic now you do not have a light speed um, restriction in the matter and above level uh, in this blown up popcorn type of a um, physics uh, with great distances between uh, uh, the nucleus and, and the electrons, etc., and the Planck length to its of an electron, uh, theoretically, um, now you're restricted to the speed of light. In the sub subatomic level, you do not have a light speed restriction, and now all the physics changes in that um, dark matter realm. It's not that it's not, not matter. It's not the not matter realm. It's the dark matter because it's matter smaller than an electron and uh, uh, operating within different principles. And it's much denser than it's, it's what we're swimming in and that uh, uh, the, it's still matter. It's just very, very fine, small matter. So fine that with our tools that are at the atomic level, we can't, grasp it we can't work with it we can't manipulate it because our matter sized tools uh from an electron and larger are too clumsy they're too big and so we have to look at the effects and the and the stuff and manipulate it via fields and uh we we see a field effect from it and with fields we can affect it and manipulate it and that's where you get these other vehicles if you will um using um uh waveguides to then achieve um very high velocities <clears throat> and maneuverability and stuff like that wow wow i saw some um some other things cooked up then one when you're talking so um <clears throat> when we said about anti-gravity that comes to 146 which comes to um new jerusalem comes to ivanka trump it comes to father trump but it also comes to um leonardo da vinci and he you know there's diagrams of his work of you know helicopters etc kind of being made kind of mechanically back then um but also when you were talking about time travel so the word time is 47 or is john Travel comes to 78, which is Kennedy. So it makes me think of 
John Kennedy. Um, and that word comes to one, well, those words come to 125 again, which takes us back to the Pentagon. So Pentagon is, is 92. Uh, the is 33, takes you to 125. I just wonder. Let if me just something. add one thing. Mm, you know, yeah. the Pentagon, of course, the uh, Pentagon here uh, is five sided. Uh, yes. The foundation for the Pentagon here in the US, the foundation was uh, dug ceremonially uh, on. Uh, 9-11, 1942. And of course, then it was struck on 9-11 uh, by the missile. And of course, the 29 being a uh, goddess of chaos, but also code for 9-11. Wow. So you see those uh, repeating over and over again, and you yeah. wonder how much of it uh, is you know, the matrix in the background and how much of it is engineered and intentional yes. because people are branding things for their own purposes. <clears throat> yeah. Also as well on 9-11, so September, the word September comes to 103, which comes to uh, Solomon, comes to Princess, comes to Jack Kennedy, and it also comes to, um, the, the latest one we had was last year, if, I mean, I, you know, people might think I'm wrong on this, but I hope perhaps maybe there's a way that even the original JFK may be with us in some form. But if he was alive, he would have been 103 years old on that day. Sorry, not that, yeah, he would have been that age. But also the word 11 comes to 63, which takes you back to the, you know, what happened back in Texas in 63 with him. Um, so it does make you wonder, you know, how much of this is, it does make you wonder. It's very interesting. You know, just, I didn't know that about the 1942, September 11th. Um, but, uh, well, and the other thing yeah, is just, said, yeah. just for one other thing, just cause we're there. Uh, yeah. and it is a core thing. The nine 11 event is very mm. important for people. To remember, um, <clears throat> the, uh, uh, that was, uh, those towers were built uh, by the Rockefeller brothers, uh, Nelson Rockefeller specifically, um, being uh, core to the building of the Twin Towers and that whole complex in there. Uh, when he did his article with Newsweek magazine, and I believe it was 1967, uh, when they were nearing completion, that was the first interview he'd had in a long time on this. And uh, it was interesting that the date that was chosen for the release of that Newsweek interview was 9-11 of 1967 for the dedication of the uh, Twin Towers. Wow. Um, and then uh, the other thing people need to remember, it that was a ritual. It was done in a very precise location. And all of the buildings around the Twin Towers have ritual meaning. So, for example, the Twin Towers are the two towers from Masonic lore. I can't remember what one's, uh, whatchamacallit, and the other one's Boaz. And uh, that is actually a pathway or a gateway. It has ritual meaning like a birth canal. And so uh, for the uh, spiritual to enter the physical, um, what was happening over the towers on 9-11 when the uh, uh, towers were attacked and then collapsed, this this gateway between the spiritual and the physical realm was uh, collapsed to allow this transit of demon spirits, if you will, in this world or, or God spirits. What was happening above that was that in the heavens above, Virgo was birthing. Now, the, the importance of that is that you could not have had the ritual meaning of 9-11 on 9-10 or 9-12. It had to be that specific date. You, uh, uh, this would, was planned for a long time. And by the way, knowing that, that this date was critical, first off, 9-11, 3 BC, is the true birth date of Christ. He wasn't born in December. He was born in, in September. Uh, he was born 9-11, yep. 3 BC. Now, that's relevant because they had to villainize the birth date of 
uh, Christ from the Bible. And then also this birthing, this spirit realm into our world of this chaos and, and uh, manipulation and control, they had to reown those numbers on the 9-11. And that branding had been occurring for a long time. By the way, all through these Catholic uh, structures, buildings within the Catholic Church uh, uh, for over a thousand years, you have seen uh, including at the Vatican and other places, uh, I, X, X, I. Well, what's that in Roman numerals? That's 9-11. Um, <clears throat> and then around the Twin Towers in New York, for example, the Statue of Liberty, Liberty given to America by the French uh, Masonic Society. Well, what do they say it is? They say it's ISIS. Mm -hmm. so yeah. the statue of liberty is isis with an eternal flame in her hand so you have a spiritual aspect to that she's this goddess that we you know everybody's excited here in america but you have isis the goddess that's there in new york harbor with this uh, eternal flame and she's a witness and and isis is who she's the mother of osiris mm -hmm. she's also the mother of Horus, because when the myth is that when Osiris was killed, I, Osiris was this evil, evil god. Uh, the story is in the Sumerian and, and Babylonian text that Isis was raped by Zeus, and she had two sons, Set, which was a very good son, uh, and uh, very you know good to the people the mere humans or whatever around and osiris who was very evil and was very destructive and 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 mean to all the humans around in this god world so um on one particular day set went out and killed osiris and chopped him into 14 pieces and scattered the pieces across the whole world um when isis his mother found out that the brother had killed him she raced out around the world of course being a god you can do this kind of stuff and she picks up all the pieces and comes out and, and assembles them all in one place and then she realizes that she's only got 13 of the four pieces of osiris the 14th piece being his penis and so she fashioned a penis out of stone because the penis was supposedly eaten by a fish. Okay, well, she didn't find the fish. She didn't find all the other pieces. She can't find the penis, whatever. So she fashions a penis out of stone. She makes a dildo. And then she has sex with her own son's corpse. Well, they're gods. They do weird stuff. Um, so she becomes pregnant in the myth as a result of having sex with her son's corpse. And because she doesn't want his line to be extinguished, to expire. She wants the evil to stay alive. This evil God son of her, she wants it to stay alive. Well, whatever. So when she has a child, the child is named Horus. Horus is the sun God. Mm -hmm. These people that we're fighting are literally sun worshipers, not the son of God, Christ, but the sun in the heavens, a very physical God. They worship the rising sun. And in the Bible, in Second Kings, it talks about where the worshipers of Horus had tower monuments to their tower God in the Holy of Holies in Jerusalem. And what are those? They're phallic symbols. They're monuments in stone, just like the Washington Monument. They're tower god representations, the big penises right there in the Holy of Holies. And God was, uh, you know, livid over it and that the blended religion. And so, uh, uh, you know, he's cursing them and he raises up a king who goes in and pulls all of them out and has them burned and destroyed down by the Brook Kindred or whatever. And because the priests had morphed in their religion, they were turning their asses to the throne of God, and they were bowing to the rising sun, putting their asses towards God inside the Holy of Holies. The people weren't seeing it because it's protected. It's inside the tent. But behind the scenes, 
they weren't worshiping the God in heaven. They were uh, sticking their ass in his face and they were bowing to Horus. And this, this occult religion, this hidden religion is taking place in plain sight. Out during the day, the priests are walking around amongst the people and they're all the holy ones and all. And behind the scenes, they're worshiping this occult God that had nothing to do with the God of uh, the Israelites. And God hated that. Well, that tower God, that monument, the Isis Osiris uh, mythology is present today right here in America, the entire federal system. Mm -hmm. Running America is built around this great big huge dildo, this fuck you, this penis right in the middle of Washington, D.C. that's the center of the national city of America. And it's a great big fuck you, not just to America, but to the whole world. So, and it's all related to this occult thing. When you look at all the buildings in New York, around the Twin Towers, you've got all the 42 gods of the Greek mythology presented there. You've got the bull down there in Wall Street. Mm -hmm. You've got all these, all those buildings have specific meanings hidden in plain sight. All the gods were present symbolically with their mythology, watching the Twin Towers go down as above, so below. What was going on above in the heavens exactly during the hours when 9-11 happened, when the planes were hitting the buildings and the buildings were falling down and the spiritual veil between the spiritual and the physical world was symbolically being brought down up above in the skies above Virgo was birthing. And remember what George Bush jr. Was doing at the time he's reading the goat story mm -hmm. yep. to the kids because he was narrating while the actual event was going on, which was this birth and goat. And by the way, over in Europe, for some of the rest of your listeners, go back to the tunnel dedication ceremony with this tunnel, this long, huge tunnel. And what do they got? They got the dancing goat and the strangest, most bizarre um, opening ceremony you've ever seen in your whole life. It's all about the goat. These religions, this occult religion is being practiced right in front of you by your leaders in plain sight because they are bringing in this occult spiritual realm into our world from their positions of leadership. They are mutually self-promoting each other behind the scenes and practicing their religion in plain sight. And you think they're the high priests of politics and finance and everything else. And, and they bless this financial thing and we're going to take care of the country. This and that. They're practicing their religion in plain sight behind the curtain. They're sticking their ass in the face of God. They're laughing at you as Christians, as believers. And they're practicing their religion at your expense, right in plain sight, as they take over your country, your land, the world. Uh, one last thing, let me just add this in, in this context. What was Hillary going to do? What was she all excited to do in the last days of her campaign in 2016? She was all excited because they were going to bring the Arch of Baal, B-A-A-L, yep. yep. to America. Mm -hmm. And she wanted to do a speech in the Arch of Baal, just prior to the election in 2016. What is the Arch of Baal? The Arch of Baal was at the gateway to the city of Baal and the Temple of Baal. Where was the Temple of Baal lo located? Baal is how some people say it. It's in the Bible. The Baal worshippers were the ones that were on top of the hills around the city of Jerusalem and around the country. And on these hills, they would have fires. And these fires were dedications to Baal. They had the statue of Baal up there. And the scripture says that they made their children to pass through the fire. Mm -hmm. Yep. What that, that, that's very church. Okay. That's very, uh, you know, mainstream media. Oh, well, they made their kids pass through the fire and it's, you know, so an honor. No, <laughs> they sacrificed their children to Baal 
by roasting them in the fires. Yep. It was a sacrifice of their children to Baal, the god Baal. And the god Baal was worshipped in the temple of Baal, just inside Baal's gate that was located at the base of Mount Hermon. Mm -hmm. Mount Hermon is the location where the 200, according to Sumerian legend, according to Babylonian legend, the 200 uh, gods fell to earth and landed at the top of Mount Hermon. And the highest altitude world historical site recognized by the UN as a ancient ruin, the highest altitude ancient ruin on, on planet Earth is at the top of Mount Hermon where the 200 are claimed to have landed. And they descended down off the mountain, had their temple there, dedicated to Baal, their god person, and the people would have to come and bring sacrifices to Baal in order to have a good uh, harvest, in order to have, stay alive, etc. So this satanic empire started there. So Hillary wanted to do a speech from the Arch of Baal dedicated to a god that's all about child sacrifice, and we're supposed to think that that's okay? Are you kidding me? So for those that think maybe, you know, my talk about this phallic symbol and all this other stuff uh, is over the top, they're still practicing it right in plain sight. This fight that we're seeing in the political realm right now, remember, WikiLeaks is still relevant and valid. What was in the leaked WikiLeaks papers, That which, by the way, was not done by a Russian hack? You could not transfer data at the rate that it says it was transferred in the um, metadata within the material from the WikiLeaks. The metadata being stuff that tells you how rapidly the information was recorded uh, on the uh, digital device. Um, it could only have been done directly at the computer. A person had to be in the room with the computer, put the recording device right onto the computer and download it. That's why Seth Rich is still relevant. Uh, it wasn't done by hackers. Nobody in the world could have hacked it over the wires available at the time because that technology still doesn't exist now to move it over the wire at that speed at great distance through the uh, telephone interchanges remotely, etc. A person had to be physically in the room. It wasn't Russian hackers. And what was in that WikiLeaks data? The That's WikiLeaks right. data is the communication, including Podesta, yep. Hillary's campaign manager, talking about going to spirit cooking dinners mm -hmm. where they ritually celebrated the eating of human flesh. Okay? Child sacrifice, human sacrifice, other stuff. You can say, well, they weren't actually doing that but they were having fun talking about it was ritually talked about. Okay. Well, they were ritually talking about, it. they were ritually talking about human sacrifice. That's not the religion that Christians in uh, the rest of the world want practiced in plain sight. They were sticking their asses in your face and laughing at you. Okay. So this fight we're in right now is actually really very much. So a fight for good over evil mm -hmm. back and forth and the language yeah. between the opponents, us and them, is the language of numbers because we've reached this moment in history yeah. where via the numbers, via the computers, the communications have been restored and are being built out to defeat that moment at Babel. And once this war is over right now, the victors will return to the stars. Yeah. Juan, thank you, man. It's been a it's been a real honor and pleasure, and we'll have to definitely do this again. And um, some of the things you just raised, I just quickly noticed some numbers on it. So you were talking about uh, the World Trade Center. Uh, if you do the Gematria on World Trade Center, it comes to one eight five, which comes to Donald John Trump, comes to Book of Revelation, 
just across the water from there. So you can think energetically that they were after him back then, but we're going into the time of reversal and, and good uh, overcoming darkness. So if you go across the water, you've got Statue of Liberty there, which you mentioned again. Um, and uh, Statue of Liberty comes to 198 in simple gematria, which comes to President Trump and it comes to the resurrection. So we're all anticipating with, with, uh, with excitement his, his return, his resurrection. Um, yes, and you also praise the Lord. <laughs> praise the Lord, bring it on. And uh, you also mentioned Virgo, which was fascinating. So I did the numbers on Virgo. Virgo comes to 77, which comes to uh, Moses, comes to Flynn, comes to Suez, comes to my channel, uh, Psych, Psych Club, uh, comes to Lady Diana. And you said about the, um, the birthing of Virgo. So birth is 57, which is moon, which is Tesla, which is swan, which is England. Birthing takes you to 87 which is stellar, which is truth. But if you do the birthing of Virgo, it takes you to 179, which comes to the New Jerusalem. We spoke about that. But if you, if you do um, reverse birthing, so reverse 92, Manhattan, uh, Pentagon, reverse birthing comes to 179 as well. So perhaps all of these things, like you said, it's the good versus uh, darkness and all these things that they've done are being reversed and, and are in the process of, a reversal and, and God winning. So, and then the other one as well, World Trade Center. So it's now called one World Trade Center. It used to be two, you know, it used to be World Trade Center and it was two buildings representing 185 Donald John Trump. It makes me think of POTUS, the father, and, one eight, uh, and 138 real uh, Donald Trump, real Donald Trump. Um, but if you do one World Trade Center, the word one is uh, Neo Matrix, but it's also DJT 34, but you add those together. 185 plus 34 takes you to 219. One World Trade Center comes to the Mount of Olives. And Q's always saying everything's going to be biblical. So it's just, it's fascinating the things you've done. And it's, it's been like brain candy. So thank you. Absolutely. Much appreciated, buddy. And we want to do it again. Where can yeah. people find your new book? We're going to put the links in the video yeah. one. Where, where can people uh, find you? It's over at uh, gumroad.com. Uh, and I'll send you a link and you can include it with what you're doing. This is yes. actually, this is the first. Uh, copies of the uh, second edition that just came out. Uh, you can see, uh, uh, in fact, it's very important. Uh, you'll see that Melania is on the back cover and all of this. Yeah. Yeah, for those that have the first edition, look at that cube and remember the first edition on every single page had that cube. That's, that's what it looks like. Right? Notice the Melania color is 50, the same. Her name's 55 dress, equals heaven. That's the dress that Melania wore as she was returning home to Mar-a-Lago on her last day as Flotus on January 20th of uh, uh, 2021. That oh, yeah. was her dress. And you know what she was telling you? That's all code for election 2020 isn't over and we're going to be celebrating and dancing in the street at some point in time. <laughs> and, uh, uh, so it's not over. So, uh, it matches what was in the first edition of the book. The first edition sold out. Um, in fact, they're going for quite a bit more than, uh, uh, I sent them out for, which is fun. And, uh, but the second edition is just amazing. It'll only be out for a short while. And, uh, uh cause the storm edition is coming. So, uh, awesome. people, I hope we'll enjoy it. And it's, uh, it's quite beautiful. We've already sold a big percentage of what we had printed. So, um, anyway. everyone on the channel, check it out, check it out, check out one. Book. And also if you're interested in doing the, doing the numbers, I've got a digital, uh, audio course and workbook called Trumpology, um, which uh, is going well as well. So, uh, you know, one thing too, let me just mention mm. one thing too. Um, uh, if your people haven't watched it, uh, uh, if you go over to uh, Rumble and to your film, Mac, yeah, your uh, film, yeah, the uh, the film is so fun. Uh, the called the makings for a perfect day, and uh, it's on YouTube and yeah, other yeah. stuff. That's actually been viewed about three million views total in wow. all the various platforms. But um, uh, of course, uh, you you Brits will enjoy the fact that I I drive my Aston Martin in the movie, <laughs> and uh, it's a lot of fun, and I. I, I really enjoy that car. I've got, uh, uh, I can't drive it now because I'll get pulled over too many times and we don't wave and stop me. But uh, so it, it'll, it'll be in the museum somewhere. But I, I, I actually am going to send it out with a, a, 
a bus tour that's going out across the country and have it stopped a couple of times and let them uh, let folks get a chance to see it. But uh, uh, now awesome. I'm just driving my vent Bentleys and that's about it. I've got several Bentley convertibles. So uh, I, I have a great appreciation for you, you folks over there with the brick cars. And by the way, Jennifer Max doing the follow on to that movie and uh, has already started filming on that. And it has another British car in it and people are going to get a great big, huge kick out of that. There so, Anyway, go watch the call. Don't watch it. Don't watch day. it. Yeah, Juan, it thank you, buddy. It's been a real awesome. pleasure. It's been thank a real you pleasure. so much, Juan. I cannot wait to do it. Do this again. I've I've really just been in awe of all your knowledge, and I love all your Bible knowledge. And I cannot. I know my audience is going to love this, so I cannot wait to, to talk to you again. All right. Well, I Thanks, appreciate. Bryce. All right. And by the Thanks, way, Juan. oh, by the way, I'm actually doing a private showing today here in uh, D.C. Uh, boy, what a beautiful day it is out there. I get the clouds are coming through. I don't know if you can see it. Um, uh, I'm actually Sound doing a private viewing today of Sound of Freedom uh, and another one uh, over in uh, Texas here next week, a uh, private one. And uh, Jim Caviezel's with me. We're, we're um, getting some of the uh, uh, funding for the marketing side of the movie uh, out of the way. But I'm anxious for people to see that. The child trafficking issue is the most important issue on the planet in, in many ways right now. Uh, there's more people in slavery today than ever in human history, and most of them are children. And so that's where my efforts are at uh, for the foreseeable future um, on the political side and uh, getting back uh, control of our country here in America. Uh, it's critical. We're going to do that, and then we're going to come back out and help the rest of the world, not being our brother's keeper, but being our brother's brother, um, starting with the children. And it's the most important thing. The Sound of Freedom movie is uh, an amazing movie. I'm looking forward to having that out uh, early part of next year. And uh, that's one of the things I'll look forward to talking about when we get closer to it. So there you go. Yeah. Thank you so awesome. much. Awesome. Thank you Thanks, so Juan. Much, Juan. God bless. Thanks, Bryce. Yeah. Take care, guys. Speak soon. God bless. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.